So I have a weird history with RMS. Most of their products I can't get to work for me, but when they launched this new foundation, the curiosity still got to me and I wanted to review this foundation for you, see if it's worth it. So in today's video, there will be an application. I'll be doing a wear test. I also filmed the foundation in a lot of different lights because I definitely noticed like studio lighting washes a lot out so i showed you a natural light in my studio lights and then just in like a shaded area and i will be filming throughout the day to update you on how it's wearing so hopefully you find this helpful and we're really putting this to the test it's pretty warm today i'm already sweating so it's definitely going to be put through the ringer so let's just start with the details of this foundation so it's called the re-evolve medium coverage liquid foundation if i counted correctly they only have 16 shades and just looking at the range it definitely needs some work there's just a lot of like mid-tone beige shades and really only two deep shades so it doesn't really seem like there's a lot of variation in undertone and i found that when picking my shade as well i got the shade 11 which is ivory with a slight golden base just because the other two lighter shades didn't say what the undertone was so i don't really like that about that either like i like to know what the undertone is it's weird that not all shades have an undertone description because the lightest shade just says lightest alabaster the second lightest says a light shade for fair skin and then the one I got says ivory with slight golden base. So I would say that's very confusing. They should add an undertone for each shade for sure. It's $48 for 0.98 ounces so slightly less than a standard foundation. $48 pretty on par for RMS but this is also a refillable foundation so I think that's interesting we'll be talking about how that affects the packaging and like the feel of the product a little bit later on but it's described as a natural finish it says a non-comedogenic and silicone free natural finish liquid foundation that provides all day medium coverage and skin improving benefits for a youthful looking complexion so it also has this ingredient called Titanol, an advanced ingredient that visibly firms, tones, and smooths. Looks like that's trademark, so I'm not exactly sure what that is. Vegetable squalane, and then an adaptogenic herbal blend, which balances, soothes, softens, and hydrates. Vegan, cruelty-free, gluten-free, and comes in recyclable packaging. So it sounds like the dream foundation to me. That's what I like. I like a skin finish. I definitely like more medium to fuller coverage, but on the day-to-day, -day, medium is perfect if it's actual real medium coverage. The shade range is already like a point off for me. It was confusing for me to pick my shade. The shade I got, I think is still a little bit dark for me, and I just wish they had more shades for sure. I also love a foundation that has skincare benefits in it, which RMS does kind of their thing it's a natural brand they do focus more on making a formula that's good for your skin and will help actually improve your skin over time versus you know damaging it or just not really doing anything like other foundations so here's what the bottle looks like it is so washed out right now but hopefully in the close-ups you'll be able to see a little bit better so the actual size of this foundation is pretty big um, it does have the refillable component, so that's, it's almost a pro and con. I love that it's refillable. You don't have to keep buying a whole new bottle. You can switch out your shades, um, and the packaging is recyclable. It is clunky, it is big, but I don't think it weighs more than, say, like a glass container. So it depends on if you are traveling a lot and you don't mind having a bigger sized foundation. To me, I'm just like neutral on it. Um, but I do like the fact that it's refillable. So to get the product out, you twist out the top and then it kind of like clicks into place and the little part that pops up is the shade of the foundation or sort of approximately the shade of the foundation and then you pump out the product from there and then when you're done, you just wind it back down so it's not going to like accidentally, you know, squirt in your makeup bag or sort of get like dried and crusty on the part where the foundation exits the tube. What would you call that? I don't know. The exit, the pump exit. You know what I'm saying. Just for size comparison, here's the new Hourglass foundation next to the RMS one. You can tell the RMS one's like, it's a pretty big container. Weight wise, maybe this actually does weigh a little bit more. I'm kind of torn on this packaging because I do like the recyclable and refillable component 
but it is a pretty big bottle for foundation. It kind of actually looks like skincare. So let's get to the application of this product. I'm going to start on the left side of my face. I pumped out a, I think I started with one pump of foundation and this is the shade 11 by the way, which I think the undertone is pretty good. It could be a little bit more neutral, but I honestly never find foundations that completely match me because I am fair olive. I usually end up mixing shades and I just didn't know which one of these shades was neutral. So I just went with the light golden one but I would probably maybe purchase the one below this, but I don't know if it's cool toned or not because cool tone doesn't work for me. The whole shades are confusing, we know that, but I went ahead and started applying it with my Miss A Paw Paw sponge, which I use all the time. It applied beautifully with the sponge, and I would say this is very true to the medium coverage claim. Sometimes the sheer medium, it's a regular medium, it's full medium, it's just like medium coverage across the board in my opinion. It went on beautifully over texture, like it looks so good. I was really impressed with how it went over my texture and the amount of coverage and evenness that it gave me and it definitely feels very comfortable on the skin. I hope that this wears well because I do absolutely love how it looks and applies. So I did one half of my face and you can see the difference. It gave me a lot of coverage. So loving everything about it so far. And then on the other side of my face, I went ahead with my fingers at first just to warm the product up. This is similar to just applying with your fingers, but I like to sort of spread the product out and then use my sponge. I use this technique actually a lot with my other foundations. I feel like I get more coverage out of it and then it also just heats up the product a little bit more. I didn't really notice a huge difference between the two application methods just because I kind of used the sponge both times, but it went on really beautifully. I think if you wanted even more coverage, you could for sure use a brush, but I just prefer a sponge over my texture. It works the best for my skin type. If you're new here and aren't familiar with my skin type, I do have mm, normal to oily skin and my main concerns are texture. I do get acne around my chin and dark spots, but I would say my number one is texture. I have very textured skin and I want something that's gonna look smooth and I also think a natural finish is very important to me and something that wears well. I love high performance. If it doesn't wear well, it's not for me. So the finished look is super pretty. Love how it looked. You will see the following clips in the different lighting starting off with my studio lighting, which kind of smooths things out a little bit. And then after that, I went ahead and turned out my studio lights. So the next clip is just natural light without my studio lights. And then I also included what it looks like in direct sunlight, which really can show like any texture or anything on my face. So in all lightings, I think it looked really good, super natural, shade is a little bit off. Other than that, I'm really happy with the application and how it's looking initially. And I think by the time I was done with makeup, it was 12.30, something around that. I did show my phone. As I'm filming this part now, it is 1.30 and I'm not noticing like anything different. I will say that my smile lines are just forming because I am talking now. Hopefully the creasing doesn't get any worse, uh, but I will be putting this to the test. I do have to wear a mask for a little bit today for an appointment that I have. And I will be showing you the updates and we'll see how that wears, transfer proof or not. I'm really hoping that it does wear well. So that was it for my initial check-in. I will see you at the end of the day to update you on how this foundation is holding up. Before we get to that point in the video, I would love for you to comment, pause the video now so you can resume it later and comment below if you think it's gonna wear well or not. I would love to know your predictions, so let me know below, but I will see you all in the next check-in. All right, I'm back for my final check-in. It is 10.47, so it's actually almost been 11 hours since this product has been on my face. And I'm very surprised. I think it looks super good. Let me look close up and I'll let you know the details. So I did film a clip from the middle of the day that was from 6 p.m. to update you on the wear midday. So I will pop that on the screen here. It really doesn't look much different to how it's looking now. The only thing is that at that point, my oil did start to break through and that's about it. So 
the initial thing with this that I noticed is it did kind of sink into my smile lines and I kind of just like blended that out with my finger. Most of my foundations do that so you know it was kind of expected just because I do have like deep creases. You know things that are deep creases things are going to crease in them nonetheless. So I don't necessarily take a lot of negative from that. I was also wearing a mask for about probably around 10 minutes today. So not super long just for an appointment that I had. So I did notice that it rubbed off my nose makeup, which my mask always does that. So again, it's not super like transfer proof. Do also notice just in the top of my forehead here where I go to like touch my hair or fix my hair it just has rubbed off a little bit and other than that i feel like maybe a little bit on my chin it's coming off and below my nose just where i was wiping it but the really good thing that i noticed is i'm not nearly as oily as i am with a lot of other foundations which is interesting because this is kind of a more moisturizing formula but the sides of my nose you know how that can be like a very problem area for foundations? It looks really good, a tiny bit of bunching, but for this amount of wear, it's doing super well. Same with my forehead, like I'm not as shiny as I usually am. I was not expecting that. And I would also say my chin is a place that gets very cakey. It looks good. I'm very surprised that this is long wearing. I didn't really expect that from RMS. With my experience for the products, they're not very long wearing high performance products, although some of them may look good at first. But I really love the look, the feel. It feels super skin like. The finish is natural. I mean, it looks like skin. I would describe this as, I wouldn't describe it as a no makeup makeup foundation. I would describe it a step above that. So if you still like a natural finish, but you're like me and you just need more coverage and don't mind looking like you have a foundation on but not heavy like it still looks like your skin just like a little bit more made up if you pick up what i'm putting down it's just kind of the perfect level of coverage in my opinion and i really enjoy the finish of course i did set this with powder which i do with all my foundations i'm guessing if you did not set this with powder you would become more oily and maybe there would be a little bit more transfer but it worked very well with my powder and all the other products that I put with it. I really have nothing bad to say. Like I'm so excited that this wore well. I don't think it oxidized either. The shade is still like just compared to my chest. It's a little bit dark. I'm not sure if I'm going to exchange that for a lighter shade or just buy another lighter shade to mix in because I'm not sure the undertone of the lighter ones. That's definitely like the biggest con for me is the shades and the packaging's a little bit clunky even though it is, you know, recyclable and refillable. So this foundation is totally getting a thumbs up from me. I could definitely see myself using this as a new everyday foundation. I actually think it's very similar to my Bite Beauty one, which is my favorite, but as you know, Bite Beauty is going out of business so they will not have that foundation forever. I think it's actually a little bit better than the Bite Beauty one. It has more coverage and I think it wore better than that, but it has like the same sort of very skin-like finish. If you have textured skin, acne prone skin, I would highly recommend this formula. I find that, is this water-based? It is. I always find if you have textured skin, water-based foundations just always look so much better on my skin and you might think that might not be the case because silicone is sort of known to be smoothing but the thing with silicone is, is it kind of sits on top of your skin so it slips around into like creases or like textured areas but a water-based foundation kind of like blends with your skin and i just find they look so much more natural especially this one this is silicone free right i'm guessing so yeah i believe this is silicone free so I'm super happy with this and I'm glad it has good skin ingredients, especially for a foundation that I would be wearing every day. I think it's a great everyday foundation. This is just my first wear test with it, but I will of course continue to play around with it and let you know if anything changes. But at this point, with this amount of like time on my foundation, I can't believe it looks like this good. I will insert some more close-ups. 
on my phone and just of course with my camera to really show you the details but looking good very happy with it and yeah that's that so that's it for today's review of the new rms foundation i really hope you found it helpful if you did please don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already thank you all for tuning in i would love to know your thoughts on this new foundation in the comments below and i will see you all in my next video bye